Hello and welcome and congratulations on grabbing access to this video course on Webinar Lead Pro. And this is a nine part video course and I'm going to teach you how to uh, write sales copy that will convert, that will be focused primarily on and getting as many people to sign up for your webinar, whether it is a live webinar or a webinar replay. So this is video number one, the introduction. And what I want to do before we even jump right in is talk about mindset. Uh, one of the biggest mistakes that we all make is oftentimes we want to get as many people through the door onto our webinar as much as possible. Uh, but rather than thinking about the customer and their needs, a lot of times we think about uh, what sounds good to us and we just put it up there. And that's the wrong angle and the wrong mindset to have. We really want to think at all things that we do, every single thing that you do, how does that impact your customer? And then we'll talk about a quick videos overview right now. And video number one, of course, is this particular video. Video number two is we're going to talk about things that you need before we talk about sales copy. And then of course, video number three, we're going to talk about benefits, benefits and knowing the benefits of your webinar or the reason why your webinar can be beneficial to people and help them is very, very important. And once you understand the benefits, then it's going to be so much easier to create your headlines, your sales copy and everything like that. A lot of times we create headlines beforehand without the benefits. And then we wonder why it doesn't convert. Well, the benefits or the reasons why what's in it for your customer is going to be the reason why they sign up. So we're going to talk about that in video number three, video number four, we're going to talk about headlines and sub headlines. So I'm going to give you some real life examples of different headlines that have worked for us and that will definitely work for you if done correctly. Video number five, we're going to talk about freebies, things that you can give away for free via the webinar or even before the webinar as an incentive to get people to sign up. Now there's a right way of doing this and there is a wrong way of doing this. And I'll talk more about that in just a minute. Next we have video number six. Building curiosity or getting people interested in what's on the other side of the door after they fill in their name and their email is crucial. So I'm going to talk about things that you can add to your landing page to help increase those conversions. Video number seven, we're going to talk about scarcity. How do you get people to take action right away? And the reason being is because a lot of people are just busy. The reason why a lot of times they don't sign up is because they think, hey, I'll sign up later. And then the later comes and they forget. So it's not that most of the time that they don't necessarily like your content. A lot of times that could be the issue, but a lot of times it's because they just forget. Of course, video number eight, we're going to talk about compliance and legal pages and where you can go to find them to make sure that your landing page and your webinar landing page is safe to be promoted on places like Google AdWords or even Facebook ads. And of course, last but not least, we'll talk about video number nine, the inside of the webinar funnel. So right now I'm mainly going to be talking about the front page before somebody actually sees your webinar or signs up for it. And then at last but not least, we'll talk about inside of the webinar funnel. We'll talk about what softwares you can use to automate it. And I'll even give you access to some coupons that we were able to get access to that will help you automate your webinar funnels. Now, before we end this video, I want to talk about what you need to get started. For now, what you really need is a lead capture generator. So in other words, you need to have the ability to create lead capture pages and you need the ability to, of course, connect that lead capture page to some sort of autoresponder like getresponse.com or even aweber.com. Now let's move on to video number two and talk about what you need to have before we talk about sales copy. 
Hello and welcome back. This is video number two and we're going to talk about what you need to have in hand before we even talk about sales copy. So before we discuss sales copy, you need to get a list of what you have, such as who are you selling to? What do they get afterwards? Do they get something like a lead magnet, which is basically something you give away for free uh, to gain somebody's email address? Are you giving that away for free? Is that going to be inside of your live webinar or webinar replay? Or is that something that people can download immediately upon filling out their email address? So the reason why I'm asking you to figure this out right now, because you want to put that information on your actual lead capture page. What I found over the years is that transparency helps. You don't have to give everything up front, but just letting people know up front what they get on the other side actually will help them out. You could even, you know, we found that even pictures or even uh, sometimes you really have to test this out, but sometimes even videos can work in the sense that if you show people what they get afterwards, like you're clicking and downloading something, and that can also help conversions as well. Now, overall, I'm going to talk about it later on. Should you use video or should you not use video? Uh, really get, comes down to testing it and seeing what works. Uh, but we'll talk more about that in a different video. But really right now, what I'm trying to get you into the frame of mind is what are you selling? What are you giving on that live webinar, which makes it irresistible for somebody to want to actually get on to watch that webinar? So essentially what you're trying to do is you're trying to build curiosity to get somebody to actually take action, right? Another thing is type of webinar. Is it going to be a webinar replay or is it going to be a live webinar? So obviously if it's a webinar replay, uh, you probably don't want to tell people that it is a live webinar. Some, but you can say, you know, you can watch the webinar now, right? Kind of thing. And you don't really have to mention whether it is a webinar replay or not. Uh, we found over the years that, to be honest, uh, regardless of it being alive or not, uh, we found that webinar replays and live webinars actually convert very, very well. You know, live webinars are great because people can get their questions answered live, but at the same time, Webinar replays, as long as the content are really, really good, then at the end of the day, it doesn't matter that it's a webinar replay. What matters is the content that you're providing and that you are fulfilling a promise that you made on the actual lead capture page. So that's why we're thinking in advance here. What are you providing? Are you selling something? What kind of action do you want them to take? So these kinds of things I want you to jot down uh, write down on a piece of paper or even your iPhone or smartphone. Just jot it down right now and feel free to pause this video at any time. The next thing you got to think about before we even talk about sales copy, and if you don't have access to it right now, that's fine. Uh, but just keep in mind that you will need to have these in hand before you begin to actually set things up. So as far as landing page options go, how do you deliver your webinar? What we found is to get people to sign up for a webinar, as you know, GoToWebinar is a system and a platform that allows you to record your live webinars. Now, they also provide a means of a page that allows people to sign up onto your live webinar. Now, we've tested this before and we found actually over the years that actually having a, a better looking lead capture page such as lead pages and using that to kind of gather the email address and then getting people onto the go to webinar actually works better than providing the default opt-in page that go to webinar provides to you so that's something that we just found and you can test it out if you would like but what we do now is we use lead pages and lead pages provides you with some amazing templates that can also provide you with a lot of scarcity and a lot of curiosity and a lot of stuff that I actually will be talking about later on. 
uh, but you don't have to use lead pages. You can use other things like optimized press or anything like that. In addition to that, you will need to have access to an email autoresponder, which will basically capture your email address, the, the prospect's email address and the prospect's name as well. So autoresponders, you can use anything. There's a lot of them out there. There's getresponse.com or even aweber.com. That's A-W-E-B-E-R.com. So that's another one. So you're going to need a lead capture page and an autoresponder. So two things. Now, another thing that we found that works really, really well is having access to a automated webinar evergreen system. Ever webinar is a system. It's not really a platform to record webinars, but it allows you to take an existing webinar that you might do. Let's say, for example, on GoToWebinar, you do a live webinar, and then you take that video file, you upload it to, say, YouTube or Vimeo, video hosting, and then you place it within Ever Webinar. So whatever webinar does is it basically kind of replicates or creates some a great experience that allows you to make it feel like they're at a live webinar. So that's what every webinar is all about. Uh, webinar Geo will also help you automate your webinar as well. And we've actually tested both of these. So we've actually bought both of these. And uh, with the Webinar Geo, we were actually able to work out a 40 percent off coupon, uh, which we'll be providing later on at the end of the video course. And every webinar does cost a good amount of money. It's about a thousand dollars. So just keep that in mind. Uh, a lot more expensive, but it's uh, definitely nice to have if you want to create that kind of live experience with a non-live webinar replay. So that's just something that you need to be aware of, of what's out there. So you definitely need GoToWebinar or Webinar Geo, and you definitely need an autoresponder. So if you do lead pages, autoresponder, and go to webinar, that's fine. Or you can do go to webinar, ever webinar, and an autoresponder. So these two, the ever webinar essentially replaces lead pages. All right. So not going to go into too much depth, but those are things that you definitely need to have uh, before you can actually get up and running. So we're really focusing on the sales copy element and how to get people converted over and signed up on your webinar. So with that said, let's move on to video number three and we'll talk about benefits. Hello and welcome back. This is video number three and we're going to talk about benefits. And the reason why we want to talk about benefits before we talk about headlines and sub headlines and all the other sales copy is simply because benefits are inside of your headlines, are inside of your bullet points, inside of your sales copy. So that's why this is so crucial. So benefits first, headlines later. And I really want you to focus on things like power words or verbs or action words. If you can include more of these within your bullet points and inside of your headlines and along with your benefits, then you will essentially create a, a pretty powerful headline and pretty powerful bullet points. Because if you really think about it, and going back to kind of the mindset, what we talked about earlier is we need to focus on what's in it for me on this webinar. So obviously me is going to be your prospect. So what's in it for your prospect on this webinar? What's so special on the live webinar? Or maybe if you can split it up here, what's so special about them actually signing up and attending the live webinar versus if they didn't attend the webinar, what would they actually be missing out on? So that's something you want to jot down. Okay. Maybe they need to attend the live webinar because you're going to show something to everybody that you don't want everybody else to see. So you're going to see that angle used a lot with webinars. Another thing is 
maybe if somebody attends the live webinar, they can ask you questions because if they're watching a webinar replay, they may not be able to ask you the actual questions live. So a lot of people like that aspect, and I think we all do, especially if we're gonna buy a product, we wanna make sure that we want to ask as many questions as possible. So that's why live webinars essentially are really, really good. The webinar replays are just as powerful, but live webinars oftentimes are much more powerful simply because it's live and you're able to answer more questions. Let's take a look at the actual benefits. So what are benefits? Benefits are things not just that people get because those are actually features. So if we take a look at a chair, the feature would be like the chair rocks. So it's, for example, if it's a rocking chair, the chair is rocking, you know, the feet on the rocking maybe is made up of a certain material. But if you think about it, if somebody read that, if they say they were like, okay, this chair was made of some sort of amazing material in their minds, they're thinking, well, why does that matter? Like, why should I care about that? Right. And if you think about it, if you look at a product and they just list all the features that is red, that is green, that is uh, stainless steel, none of that matters to you. Right. Until you understand how that will impact you. Right. So without the benefit, it means nothing to the visitor. Now, if we switch around and we take a look at it and we say, well, this rocking chair will help you relax. You know, it's made of this type of material that when you rock the chair, you don't even feel like you're even rocking. So what it does is it indirectly helps you relax, which then indirectly helps lessen your stress levels. So if you're selling that to somebody who you know, is extremely stressed, is looking for solutions, are looking for ways to solve that kind of pain, then guess what? You're more likely to appeal to that type of person, right? So I really want you to think about benefits. Don't even think about features. And I'll give you more examples as we go on. But I really want you to think about that. What are the benefits of your webinar? So if they come and attend it, and maybe they get to talk to a guest or maybe the guest comes is, is going to talk about something that will solve their pain. So if you know their pain, it's easier to solve that pain, right? If you don't know them, you don't know what their pain is. You don't know what they go through your prospect. That is, then it's really hard to speak directly to them. Now I'm going to actually give you some headlines that you can use and you can fill in the blanks of the headlines and with action words and verbs and power words. The power words are things like, you know, discover or finally do this or do that or how to and verbs add the effect and make it more kind of powerful. So what I recommend that you do is there are tons of power words out there on the Internet. In fact, if we head on over to Google and you just type in power words, you can actually see in Google, there are many places where you can get access to power words. In fact, I like to just go straight to the images section, which will give me access to a bunch of kind of cheat sheets, which will allow me to find power words. So we click on this and we can view the actual image. So we'll zoom in a little bit, but it says top 100 power words. Now these are resume words. So let's move on to another one. So we can see absolute amaze, authentic bargain, quick, quick and easy, you know, direct, easy, excellent. So you see these, these are kind of words that just stand out to you, right? So use these words within your headlines. Here's some more power words to use as well. So you don't even have to go out there and buy, you know, swipe files or anything like that. There are tons of swipe files that are on Google that you can actually use. So now that you have a better idea of what a benefit is and what power words are and to use action verbs, let's talk about creating headlines. And I'll actually give you an actual swipe headline that you can use yourself that has worked well for us. 
Hello and welcome to video number four. We're going to talk about headlines and sub headlines. So now that we talked about benefits, what we want to do is we want to front load the headline with benefits. All right. So now that you have the benefits and hopefully if you have had a chance to apply what we talked about in the previous video, you should have some benefits in hand that are reasons why people should sign up for your webinar. All you have to do now is simply take those benefits and apply them to your actual page. Now I'm going to show you how to make them, you know, look nicer and how to kind of effectively utilize them. So within your headlines, what we found is using numbers, case studies, social proof, using power words and verbs in your lead capture page all in all can actually help work together to help convert the prospect into a actual attendee. Another thing we found that works is you create a common enemy. Now it's basically like prospect versus enemy. Now the enemy can be someone who is withholding secrets, not always necessarily negative. For example, a weight loss or anything to deal with health, for example, as you know, you go to the doctor typically for that. Or if you are in a specific industry and maybe you go to a mentor or a guru or you, you think about someone who is bigger than you or maybe they are the underdog essentially, like the prospect is the underdog and there's this big company or big corporation that is over them. And if you can figure that out and create a common enemy that everybody in that niche can relate to, then that actually will help you in your headline. So for example, discover a weight loss method that your doctor doesn't want you to know. And maybe you have a special guest or maybe you're a host or maybe you figured out something like a method or your guest has found out a method that helps them lose weight that maybe they were told by their doctor, or maybe the prospect also was told by their doctor, you know, this is never going to work. You know, maybe you were told this has never worked, but my special guest here is going to show you how. So obviously there, that's kind of building a little bit curiosity. They're interested in who that guest might be. And they're of course going to want to attend the live webinar. So those are just some ideas on different headlines that you could possibly use. Uh, this is one headline that we have used that has worked over and over again. And we have actually consistently gotten 30 to 40% or even more conversion rate just by using this particular headline. So if you, you don't really want to do anything, you can simply grab this headline fill in the details and you're good to go, right? So discover how to blank. Now the blank here is an action verb. So you could say, uh, discover how to lose and then a noun, maybe lose weights in your belly or something and less than a month, a week, uh, several months in less than three weeks. And then you could put the common enemy here. Doctor doesn't want you to know. And then feature guest or, you know, whoever the feature guest is, you or your guest, you put their name here. They did this, you know, this Bob lost this many pounds in their tummy. Watch now to see how he did it. So you can apply this to something else as well. Discover how to uh, build a shed in less than two weeks and save, let's say, $3,000 because it normally costs about three to four or 5000 to build an actual shed. Maybe the big corporations don't really want you to know this information, because once you have this information, you can go out and build your own shed, you know, feature guests, maybe somebody who is unlike 
ultimately to be seen as somebody doing it. Maybe uh, my mother or you know some someone was able to set set up their shed without any difficulty in less than three weeks, saving three thousand dollars. Watch now how she did it. So maybe you're selling a product that actually you know expands and creates a shed. I don't know. So that's why knowing your benefits and knowing your product or service really well is crucial. So now all you have to do is simply fill in the blanks and you're good to go. Now, as far as like benefits go and bullets go, as far as the other pieces of your page goes, you can take this and uh, you can create bullet points. So let's say, for example, my mom, you know, set up a shed or uh, this person lost weight, watch now to see. So your bullets could be kind of variations of the headlines. So it could be stuff like, uh, she ate this and lost this amount of pounds or something, or she did this specific thing and did that and got this kind of result. So uh, your actual bullet points, what we recommend is they should also be results. So obviously your prospect wants to achieve those results, right? So what better way than to put the bullet points and use those as a means to display your results in sentences. And that's a great way to kind of get people to actually sign up because now they're interested in, you know, the, all these benefits, these results that are impacting them. Uh, they want to attend the live webinar or the webinar replay. So hopefully that gives you some ideas on, you know, what kinds of headlines, subheadlines, and even bullet points that you can actually include on your lead capture page. Now, don't make your lead capture page complex. In fact, it's super simple. Really what it comes down to is it should have a little sentence at the top, and we'll talk about that later, but a little sentence at the top that talks about like, you know, strictly confidential, this page can be taken out down at any time. Put your headline, put your subheadline, uh, put some scarcity into it, put some curiosity into it. Uh, don't for forget your call to action buttons and then your bullets. That's it. In fact, the longer your lead capture page is often the lower your conversion will be. So shorter, simple, straightforward is always the best. All right. So now let's talk about in video number five, freebies and lead magnets, things that you can get a, give away for free as an incentive to get people to sign up on your webinar. Hello and welcome to video number five. We're going to talk about freebies and freebies are a great way to get people to sign up for your webinar, but there is a right way of doing it. And of course there is a wrong way of doing it, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So what do they get? Do they get bonuses, freebies, gifts on the webinar itself, and maybe like checklists or cheat sheets or something extra of value that relates to the webinar. So obviously you don't want to just give somebody a freebie for the sake of giving a freebie to getting them signed up. You always want to make sure that that freebie, whatever you're giving them is actually related to the end desire or end result or whatever you're trying to sell inside of the webinar itself. So what is on the other side? Like I said earlier, transparency does wonders. Letting people know on lead capture page, if they're getting something, be transparent about it. what do they get exactly. And this allows people to see what they get if they fill in their email and name, and that's important. But one thing you want to make sure that you do with your freebies is they must be related they must be related to the end desire. So if you're selling a piece of software, for example, you might want to give them maybe a short video course that shows them how to do something that is related to the webinar so that you kind of prep them so that they know exactly 
you know, what they're going to be learning. So maybe the webinar is the next step. They need to watch the video or maybe a short video. And on the webinar itself, you're going to show more details. So maybe the video could be something like what or why, you know, why they should be doing this. What, what are they doing? And then the webinar itself, you're showing a little bit of the how to do it. And then maybe you're selling the actual piece of software that will speed the whole process up. So another freebie that you could give is a checklist or infographic. We recommend PictoChart if you're utilizing, you know, creating infographics. You can create a lot of beautiful infographics using PictoChart. You can take a lot of content, written content, and turn it into a better looking piece of content by creating an infographic around it. You can also give homework that they can fill in before the webinar. So maybe before the webinar, you want everybody to have a chance to fill in maybe something that you're going to go over in the webinar itself, or they fill something in so that when they attend the webinar, it's going to fulfill or complete something that was missing or a question that was missing in that homework itself. So as far as freebies go, you definitely want to make sure that it is related and that it's not the major emphasis. You want at the end of the day that your webinar be the major emphasis, not your freebie, not your gift. All right. So that's just something to keep in mind that the freebie only should complement the major emphasis, which is the webinar itself. Otherwise, you will actually get lower conversions on the webinar itself because people are signing up for the freebie. So we actually made a mistake a while back in trying to do that. And we found a lot of people signed up and that was great. But as far as getting people to attend the webinar, that actually hurt us in the long run. So keep that in mind, take our strategies, take our mistakes and apply them to your own successes. So with that said, let's move on to video number six. Hello and welcome to video number six. We're going to talk about curiosity. So now that you understand how to kind of build a basic lead capture page for your webinar, well, let's talk about curiosity because uh, adding more curiosity will allow you to convert more prospects. Uh, so obviously, as you can see, these elements alone uh, will not really help, but as a whole and as they combine with each other, they begin to help each other. So there are little things that you can add here and there that we've found that actually help conversions. Now, as far as the debate goes, should you do video or should you not do video? We found no video actually works better than video. Now, it depends on the product itself. If the product is something that you need to kind of show or you need to show the end results in some way, like weight loss, for example, you need to show people like the before and after pictures, then video might be a good thing. Or you might want to just do a very, very short video. Like if you do video, it's got to be something like three minutes or less, nothing more than that, because what people are doing when they're looking through is, is they're scanning really, really quick. So it, we found that over time, the attention span has shortened. Like it used to be like 15 minutes. Now it's about five minutes or less. So even five minutes is still kind of long. So if you can do two minutes and do a video, you can test it out as long as your, your system allows you to do a B split testing. For example, we use lead pages. And with lead pages, you can split test video or no video or with an image and see which one works the best and then go with one that works the best because obviously different audiences are going to work differently uh, from our testings. You know, most of our things use no video and we found by using video, it actually decreased the conversions because of that attention span. So obviously, like I said, test it out, see what happens and go with that. Now, 
a very short video or even a very short, like a, even a faded image can actually help. Like we found faded images work better than videos. And it depends on what you're selling, of course. So if you're selling some sort of secret or blueprint, you could take an image of the secret or blueprint and then fade it out so that it's it's sort of visible, but it's not really, you know, they can't really make out what it, it actually says. So those things helped. And like I said, it's it's not a lot. It's just like one image, you know, or or one video, one very short video. Another thing is you can tell half the story. So you can talk about the benefits. You can talk about, you know, relate to them. Maybe your guest has been in the position that they are in now and, you know, talk about that, you know, but you don't want to give everything to the actual prospect at that given moment. You only want to give them a little bit so that it gets them to get actually get on the actual webinar. So those are just little bit tidbits that, you know, I wanted to go over, but little tweaks here and there can actually help boost your conversions by, you know, a couple percentages or even more. So with that said, let's move on to video number seven and we'll talk about scarcity, how to get people to take action. Welcome to video number seven. Let's talk about scarcity. The reason why we want to add elements to help people to take action and to sign up for the webinar is simply because a lot of people forget. Most of the time it's because they're busy and they think to themselves, and we have done that too. If you think about you and I, we've done this as well, but we've thought, okay, let's do that later. Then later comes and then we forget. And then suddenly a few weeks later, we, we remember it and we're like, whoa, wait a minute. I, I totally missed that out. So essentially what you're doing here is you're actually doing people a favor as well. So getting them to take action at the very moment is crucial. So this can be for a live webinar. It can be for an evergreen webinar. And what we found over the years is countdown timers work really well, especially for live webinars. So if you put a countdown timer that ends, uh, let's say, for example, your webinar is on Wednesday, uh, you might want to put the countdown timer to end on Tuesday so that you know, you can get everybody signed up and ready to go. Now, an evergreen webinar, let's say, for example, that you have access to a webinar replay. So typically what we found is 48 hours, generally speaking, does well, 24 to 48 hours, uh, the, the less, the better. Now, if you don't know how evergreen webinars work, basically the way they work is you specify a time, let's say 48 hours, and somebody comes to that page and they see 48 hours. Now, with a regular timer, and let's say you set it to end at a certain date, everybody's gonna see that it's, the countdown timer is ending on that specific date. Now with an evergreen webinar, it is specific to each user. So if customer A comes in, they see 48 hours, customer B comes in five days later, they see 48 hours. So it's customer specific. And of course, if customer A comes back after the 48 hours are passed, they may not see the webinar replay. So adding scarcity helps. And even adding a note that this page may be removed at any time works well as well. And purposely closing your webinar down for weeks or even months and then opening it up only temporarily for a couple days works really, really well from what we have found as well. So those are just a few things. As far as countdown timers, Countdown Monkey is a good countdown timer. And there are a lot of ones out there, but that's just one that we have tested and found works really well. So now let's talk about compliance in video number eight. Welcome to video number eight. This is compliance. And this is good to have, especially when it comes to paid ads, or even when you don't have paid ads, uh, some of these legal pages are good to have. 
So in other words, if you just set your compliance and your legal pages up, then you will be Google compliant and Facebook ad compliant. Now, one thing we found is Google and Facebook do not like it when you overemphasize or if you uh, create some big claims uh, inside of your landing page. So you want to keep it simple. Uh, you want to keep it straightforward. You want to keep it down to earth. So kind of the headline that I gave to you earlier, if you stick with that kind of format, uh, generally speaking, your, your actual lead capture page will most likely be approved. Now we can't guarantee that. And you always need to follow the Google and Facebook terms of service because it does change. Uh, but overall, if you stick with legal pages like the terms of service, the privacy policy, the earnings disclaimer, the FTC policies and everything like that, uh, then you will be good to go. Now, where do you find legal pages? This is a big question that a lot of people tend to ask. Uh, so be careful as a warning not to grab legal pages off of somebody else's site. Uh, people done that before and they've gotten in a lot of trouble. So the best way to do it is do it legal, purchase your templates from a real attorney. And if you're doing online business, especially from internet marketing lawyers, there's several out there uh, you can Google it and you can, you know, always do your due diligence. We've actually purchased some templates from a guy named Mike Young, and he is a internet marketing lawyer. Uh, he has templates that you can actually buy. So it's MikeYoungLaw.com. And he's great. He's got a lot of templates. He's on top of, you know, the updates and what's happening as far as, you know, the legalities go. Uh, so we've used them and we definitely recommend them. So as far as compliance goes, that's pretty much the answer to most of your questions about where you should find these legal pages. So once you get access to that, you can customize it to your company, upload them to your website, and of course, link them to your lead capture pages. So that way you're always safe than sorry. Hello and welcome back. Congratulations on reaching the end of this video course. This is video number nine, and we're going to talk about inside of the webinar funnel. After somebody actually signs up on your front page, what do you do after that when you've done, you're done with your live webinar and you've recorded it, you've rendered it, and now it's time to upload it as a webinar replay. What do you do at this point to set everything up? so that you can run it automatically. So that's what I'm going to show in this particular video. So here's what the funnel looks like. It's not complex at all. Uh, you can add things to it to make it the experience a lot better if you want to, but you don't have to necessarily. So as you can see up at the top here, we have the registration page. So that's the initial page that everybody is going to see. And then of course they're going to sign up for the live webinar. So what I suggest that you do is you have a live webinar and if you're just getting started out, that's fine, but you want to have a live webinar because you want to be able to interact with people. And then I recommend that you use either go to webinar or if you don't want to pay that high end monthly fee, then webinar geo that's webinar J E O is another good option. But, that we've actually uh, created a discount for webinar geo and we'll talk about that at the end of the video but for now as you can see here you have the live webinar once you've recorded that webinar and you want to start a evergreen webinar process meaning you're constantly raking in and you're producing an automated money making machine that's the green part so the green part here is the webinar replay page. So you're going to upload your webinar to YouTube or Vimeo. You're going to place it on a page and then it's over here. And of course this registrar page right here is going to turn in to a webinar replay page. So everything that deals with like a live webinar wordage, it's going to change to watch this webinar replay or watch this webinar. So 
if you think about you're just taking this page here and you're turning it into a webinar replay page and then you've got it directly directed to a webinar replay page and then of course you got it directed to an offer page and that's pretty much it it's it's not complex at all now if you were to set up an evergreen ever webinar for example funnel then you can have a webinar replay lead generation page here and then you redirect them to you know sign up for the webinar replay so you could set things for example the uh, ever webinar or webinar geo is able to do this but you can set things up so that they can view the webinar replay at a certain time or they can view it immediately and then you create a experience that feels like it's a live webinar. So you could add chat, you can add other things to it as well. And then of course, you can, the nice thing about these types of systems like EverWebinar and Webinar Geo is you can set it up so that at a certain time during the actual webinar, you, when you actually talk about the offer, you can actually present the offer page. All right. so. If you're not using Webinar Geo or ever Webinar, then the problem is everything is manual. So they see the offer right off the bat. They could get distracted by that, and then you could either lose sales. Now, some cases actually work better that way, and some cases work better the other way. So it really comes down to testing it out and seeing what actually works. So we've tested both ways and found that when something works the best, we will generally stick with that. So that's why I say there's really no one size fits all solution. So that's what it comes down to. So like I said, whatever webinar is a solution, but that does cost a good amount of money. That's about over a thousand dollars. And then webinar geo, as you can see here, it is a go to webinar alternative. Plus it has the ability to run evergreen webinars. So it's essentially ever webinar and go to webinar combined. So you can save thousands of dollars. Now we were able to actually work out a deal with the vendor so you can get 40% off coupon. But in order to do that, you'll need to see the text file that comes along with this video course to get access to that coupon. All right. Well, thanks again for watching this video course and congratulations again on finishing it because most people don't actually watch all the way through. All right. So take this information and apply it and take action today.